Actually, I appreciate you showing up and uh, uh, the announcement that I'm making uh, is that I will not be seeking re-election in the 2012 general election. Uh, it's uh, been uh, a decision I've been considering for a long time and it seems early for these kind of announcements to be made in this campaign season, but since it's already kind of gotten started, I felt uh, uh, in consideration of others who might wish to seek this office uh, that uh, I should go ahead and make a, an announcement. Uh, many of them uh, have, uh, two of them anyway, have uh, held back on making their announcements out of uh, respect for the fact that I had not made my announcement yet and now uh, they will uh, be free to go out and go ahead and, and announce and pursue their campaigns, <clears throat> which I appreciate their uh, consideration there. This, uh, at the end of this term, I will have served 20 years uh, as sheriff uh, and uh, had initially uh, served as sheriff back in 1972 and then uh, worked for 20 years after that to return as sheriff. In the meantime, I had worked uh, here as the chief criminal investigator and for eight years as the chief deputy in St. Lucie County. Um, so it's been a, it's been a long uh, pursued goal of mine and as I look back, it's uh, obviously the pinnacle of my career and I'm very grateful to the people for having had the, the confidence in me to uh, allow me to uh, have this position. And uh, I hope that, uh, that I have not let them down in any way. Uh, it's been a great, a great ride. It's not over. We've still got until January of 2013. Uh, I'm very proud, extremely proud of the crew that I have been able to put together who have served me well and have definitely served the people of Martin County. Uh, I'm as proud of this group and this organization as anyone could be and I would put them up against any other sheriff's office anywhere for their uh, efficiency, their dedication, uh, their ability to get the job done uh, even in difficult times, uh, in difficult situations. I, I'm extremely proud of this crew of people and they have served us all very well. Um, the first, uh, we all make campaign promises when you run for office. <clears throat> and I was proud of the fact that uh, all of the campaign promises that I made in 1992, I was able to complete uh, by the middle of that first term in office. Um, some, many, many people don't get to complete a lot of their campaign promises. But I took each of those seriously and uh, uh, we, uh, got them done for the good of the people. Then we went on to do additional things later. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we're most proud of was our juvenile boot camp, which became one of the most effective uh, juvenile treatment facilities uh, in Florida, if not the nation. And it's very unfortunate that in uh, politics and government in recent years, issues that involve children and issues that involve prevention don't seem to get the, uh, the importance placed on them. Uh, and I guess maybe it's because uh, kids don't vote and uh, uh, there are other reasons that uh, those things get uh, ignored or overlooked. And we feel badly about that. <clears throat> I think as time goes on, people are going to realize that uh, cutting back on law enforcement and many other protective government services and ignoring the preventive aspects in criminal justice are costing us more. Costing us more to ignore them and let the problems grow than to spend some money to prevent the problems and, uh, and cure those problems. Uh, the, uh, the Juvenile Offender Training Center, as we called it, uh, generically known as a boot camp, uh, was the most effective of all the boot camps that were in Florida. Uh, we had to close it before the tragic incident in Bay County uh, where uh, one of the uh, uh, attendees uh, was killed. Uh, and uh, although uh, in explaining why they were not adequately funding our program, state officials said that we closed ours because of the incident uh, in Bay County, and that's just totally untrue. Uh, we had to close ours uh, before the Bay County incident. 
the uh, uh, dealing with uh, juvenile offenders is very difficult and we need to see more of it in the future and I, I think that perhaps in the near future we may see a little more emphasis put on uh, prevention in juvenile justice uh, we certainly need to uh, we uh, also uh, were the first aid law enforcement agency in the world to utilize the hybrid vehicles for fuel economy. Uh, we started off with a, a dozen and then later expanded to a couple of dozen uh, uh, Toyota and Honda hybrid vehicles. Uh, saved an enormous amount of fuel using those vehicles as compared to the conventional vehicles that were being used earlier. <clears throat> and uh, we received a great deal of acclaim uh, for doing that. Unfortunately, the market did not provide sufficient uh, uh, vehicles to add very many to our fleet over the following years, and the hybrid vehicles were not suited for all of the things that we have to do. But uh, we kind of got uh, help get the, the eyes opened to the uh, hybrid vehicles in, in those earlier years, and uh, many other government agencies have followed in the use of hybrid vehicles. We uh, uh, went about uh, a number of uh, innovative tasks trying to improve service to this community. We put deputies on bicycles. We put uh, uh, deputies into the neighborhoods. We started youth athletic programs. Uh, we continued and enhanced our uh, law enforcement explorer post, a program of the Boy Scouts of America. And speaking of the Boy Scouts of America, uh, in our juvenile offender training center, the boot camp, we had, I believe, the first and maybe the only bona fide Boy Scouts of America program within a detention facility that has ever existed. Uh, and uh, that was one of the factors that helped us in our success with those, those young people. Uh, I am unaware of another one anywhere, and uh, if anyone knows of one somewhere else, I'd like to know about it. Uh, I. Uh, have with me my wife Debbie, who's about as excited about this as I am, I guess. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do uh, yet. Um, I'm uh, trying to get uh, a little more enthusiastic about the possibilities. Uh, I've been asked if I'm going to run for another public office, and at this time, uh, I don't know. I had uh, <clears throat> thoughts uh, earlier about possibly running for the seat that uh, uh, the, uh, Bill Snyder is giving up to run for my office. And, uh, but now we don't live in that district and we'll have to wait and see uh, what the reapportionment does. Uh, where we live now is in Gail Harrell's district and uh, I'm very happy with Gail and would not attempt to run against Gail uh, for that office. I think she's uh, got a good agenda and hopefully she will uh, be successful and move forward. As far as any other office, uh, uh, we just have to wait and see what comes up. I, I may want to take a little bit of a, a hiatus from politics because the mood in politics has gotten so nasty. Uh, it's, it, it's very depressing to uh, see the way many things are being done in politics. The maliciousness, the, uh, the negative uh, campaigning, um, and uh, so uh, it, it's, uh, it's embarrassing uh, as an American to see other Americans treating each other the way they are in uh, politics. I've never liked negative campaigning, uh, never engaged in negative campaigning. Anything I've said that someone might take uh, as negative is something that was a fact and uh, something that I believed in as being true and, uh, and uh, never anything that was a personal uh, Smear. 